So much discussion now about recent inflation numbers, particularly in the United States, higher than people expected. Larry Summers, of course you know, uh, raised alarms on this early and was pushed back really hard uh, by the Biden administration. Most economists, you're an economist, what do you think? I think we shouldn't exaggerate our fears around this. I mean, the bounce back in prices is real. There are a variety of different effects, some of them statistical. If prices went down last year, they're bound to go up this year by larger percentage points. There are real shortages. If you've tried to build a house or do any repairs this year, you'll know that lumber was literally just short. You couldn't get it. But I think most people agree that these are transient effects. And when I say most people, I mean the best informed decision makers in central banks globally, both on both sides of the Atlantic, and also the markets have stuck with the Fed in its assessment that this is transient. And we again should just have a sort of check on ourselves, like why are we panicking? And what does that panic relate to? And to my mind, it still is a sort of undigested legacy of the trauma of the 1970s. That's the last time there was any inflation in Western Europe and in the United States. And, you know, if we're still, as it were, working off the hangover from 50 years ago, I think, I think we do need to update our priors. We need to update our economic vision. The problem, and it remains the problem, is in fact deflation, lowflation. The fact that we aren't able to push long-run inflation expectations well above 2%. And why that matters, we'll just look at our debt pile. I mean, if you've got the kind of debt pile that we have, historically speaking, the gentle way to deal with that is, yeah. you know, is have inflation just a little bit higher than interest rates and bite yeah. away at it year by year. That's how Britain and America did it after World War II. That's the comfortable way to work your way out from underneath a debt mountain. This is the quite extraordinary thing, is on the one hand, you have seen literally trillions of dollars in fiscal stimulus, in monetary easing, that almost every major government around the world has engaged in with almost reckless abandon. And as soon as you turn open the aperture to talk about the rest of the world, it goes almost immediately to nothing. Yeah, it's, abso it's absolutely mind blowing. And then we start talking about something like climate change, which is a fundamental challenge for humanity over the next decades, which has to be addressed. And all of the focus goes there. And we've literally lived through what most of us regard as an anthropocenically generated shock, which cost us 20% of global GDP last April. I mean, that's a shock we've never ex before experienced in history. And we can't summon up the couple of $10 billion that will be necessary to provide the first best fix for this problem. And we aren't, to my mind, sufficiently focused on building resilience going forward. You know, we should be really ramping up the scale of our biomedical research, building standing capacity on a much larger scale than we currently have. Like it was a miracle what happened last year with the vaccine development programs, but we need to be in a position to do those routinely. Everything tells us we need to have the capacity to do that routinely going forward. And yet that's regarded as a temporary shock from which we recover so that we face the structural challenges of the future going forward. We're not even out of this one yet. We don't even know what variant might be in the pipeline in some of the heavily infected places where you know, the caseload is building up and so the possibilities of, of viral mutation are really mounting. It's, a, it's an, a staggering, I mean, truly difficult to comprehend. It's not even, you know, because so, say as a Marxist political economist, you might say, okay, I'll find the business interest that prevents us from acting here, the capital interest that's at stake in avoiding making these moves, the class yeah, it's interest. it's hard to find that. Yeah, but whose class interest is served by failing to address and pick up a trillion dollar bill? No one.